Greetings fellow Nerthlings. In this video I'm going to show you what a $400 screw up and an attempt to fix it before I spend 400 bucks. Now what I did was when I chemically stripped the paint on the Leslie RS5T because the previous owner put latex paint on it and it didn't look very pretty. So I wanted to strip the paint and put nice a nice fresh spray uh, coat of paint on it. So what I pretty much did was I forgot to take the diaphragms out because they got the sil silicon ring. And I forgot to take it off. So when I put chemical stripper, it kind of screwed up the diaphragm and the gasket. You can see that this thing, this one, it had it completely removed. So pretty much what I did was after I found out, um, stripping the paint all the way. You can see I just got done burning this. I got I burned these four. You can see that this one right here. I just I just got done burning it, so I had it sitting on my STH as it cooling down. And so, so while that's cooling down, let's go back to over here. So I uh, I, sh I scraped all the old old silicone off. You can see this one, it's stuff to do, but all these other ones are ready to go. Now what I'm planning on doing is this, is I'm going to have this nice flat surface. It's going to be very smooth to the touch. You can see that this one is already very smooth. The nozzles feel in very good condition. This one just has to get cleaned up. That's still pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is... Is I'm going to try two tests. One, one of them, I'm going to keep this bottom ring on. However, I'm going to use this one as the guinea pig. I'm going to try and remove this, this whole, all the, the whole uh, silicone. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put a bead of silicone all the way around. I'm going to put this on. And then when I put this on, you can see that there's still a little gap. It's like about a two millimeter gap. And where the other silicone ring goes uh, is what's sticking up right here. I'm going to put a very thin bead of silicone around here. And then after I do that, I'm going to put a power chamber on. And I'm going to clamp it shut. And we're going to have it sit like that for just 24 hours. But I just want to be safe and, put, and keep it on for at least two days. So that's my plan. So I'm going to scrape this off. And I'm going to start prepping this for the molding. A few minutes later. Okay, so. Okay, so after you pretty much clean it up as best you can, pretty much so that you want to get the bottom as best you can, as well as the side. Now, you, there's not really any particular way you can clean this, just try and, see, try and get to the point where you can see exposed metal again for the best adhesive. So you just kind of scrape off all that black gunk. Don't worry if you scrape a little bit of the other, other good silicone off because we're going to apply new silicone so don't worry about that. <sighs> okay. So. Focus. Thank you. Nope. Focus. Thank you. So, pretty much, once you get that pretty clean, as you can see. Oops, just get that out of the way. I just gotta... Now, if you have, like, you can see a little small specks with that. So, pretty much, all I really gotta do is... It's just sometimes you gotta get a wire brush and make sure it's a fairly soft one. You don't want a hard, harsh one that can actually scratch the diaphragm. Something like this. As you can see, this thing looks pretty clean. Minus the silicone. I'm just, just, I just felt like doing that. There we go. Alright, click! Okay. So there we go. I just finished doing my mold for this one. So, let me put this aside for right now. And let's do the last one. So, this is pretty much what you're left with after you, pretty much after you clean this up, you want to make it look as good looking as possible, just like this. 
So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the power chamber itself as a mold for the silicone. So pretty much, oh, I got an extra chamber right here. So pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna use use cooking oil. This is just a regular generic brand, nothing spectacular about it. You can use Pam, any type of cooking spray would work. So pretty much all we gotta do is just grab, sacrifice a rag, and just spray a little bit on, just like that. Rub it on in. All right. You can rub it in there as well as you can also spray it right directly on here. This is foam, so I don't know why it looks like it's a lot, but in reality, as soon as I wipe it, it all goes away. But you just pretty much just make sure you get everywhere on here. Just like that. Well, make sure you get in that groove. I, I use I use cooking oil because it uses a very thin layer, versus if you use like different types of oil, it could actually, def it could actually, oh yeah, is that it could, it, it would not make the, uh, it would not mold correctly, so, which is why I like to use cooking oil, cooking oil, and you just make sure you get all, every little crack and crevice in there, because if not, it will stick, trust me on that, and while that, this thing is pretty well soaked, we can take this, if you want, we can just spray a little bit more. Spray a little bit more. Pat it, and use this, rub it on it. Make sure you get everywhere, just like on the on the back cap. Just, we want to just get it everywhere. We want that oral everywhere on this thing. So now we're pretty much done with this, so you can save that for another for another mess up. So what I like to do to uh, save myself is in case if I cannot get this diaphragm out, I like to set it up just in case. So pretty much, just wipe it down. All right. So pretty much all I gotta do is just, is I just want to play myself safe. Then I just want to get this aligned correctly in case if I can't get it apart. That little hole, there we go. That little hole pretty much just gotta go over top of that, just like that. And here's the fun part. Here's where we get our hands greasy. Or dirty, I should say. Just like being micro. I'm micro. And this is my job. But anywho, we just want to try and get a nice, smooth, even bead all around. Squeeze as you go. Don't be afraid to use a lot. And just like that. And just like that, as you can see, in one steady, one steady stream of silicone. Then, uh, then, then after that, we're gonna pretty much assemble this power chamber all back together. Grab our our bag of bolts, align the holes. I'm gonna put one, put one upside down, so you gotta play fishing with it. But once it catches. You got a keeper. And then just hold it together, flip it over. Try not to move, try not to keep the back cap, the power chamber and back cap from sliding on each other. So I like to do opposites. Once you put the opposites in, you can put, I like to put all six bolts in just so I can get a nice even clamping pressure. And boom, there you go. As you can see, I got a little squeeze out on a couple of the sides, but that's but that's just fine. So I got I got these two already sitting. I got those two sitting, and I got this, and I got this guy as well. That's all securing. So. So I'm gonna wait probably at least three days. This stuff normally says 24 hours for it to fully cure, but because that this thing's being clamped so tight or in an enclosed area, I'm gonna probably let it sit for a couple more days. 
because when I opened the other one apart, that thing still smelled a lot like silicone. So I don't think that that was 100% cured, but, but now it is, or now it will be, I should say. But, but I'll let this sit for at least three days and then we'll see how it looks. So we'll see. Four to six days later. Alrighty, so all these have been sitting in for around five days. I did this on Monday, I believe, and today is Saturday, mid-afternoon Saturday. And you can see on this one we have quite a bit of squeeze out. Well, that's no problem. This one we got a little bit squeeze out, but we can always scrape that off, so I'm not worried about that. So, so I just took all the uh, bolts off for this one, and you can see it's it's. And they're pretty good, so you just want to just slowly. Well, this is on it good. This is why that I. This is why that I use cooking oil, because it it should just come apart fairly easily. But this one's being a little of a hassle. Ah, man, that's not coming out. Ah, screw it. Put a... Oh, yeah. Alright, let's see what kind of salad we tossed. Cracking it open is always the most difficult part. And there we go. Alrighty, so now, so now I got done doing one of them. And that's what this guy here looks like. Unfortunately, I just have to redo that little section. But on that, this one should be good to go. You can see, looks pretty good when you clean it all up. Just a little couple spots, but where you can simply wipe that down or use a a very fine brush. So we just simply. Go with it, go at it. You don't want to go too hard because you don't want to damage the silicon surface. So now with on with that one, <clears throat> let's go into this guy. You can see that this guy has a lot of <coughs> has a lot of extrude outs. Probably put a little bit too much on there. So now let's take this off real quickly. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we got it all off, so simply pass right off, and you can see a lot of extrude out. See, that looks pretty good. Still got that nice whiff of vinegar. What a surprise. You can see all of it's pretty well dry by now. <clears throat> so now it's time for the fun part of coming and going in. Right, focus. There we go. Very fun part of trying to get from here to here without got to separate. Got to se pretty much got to separate the mold, and I'm going to do it by running this knife or this this box cutter all along, trying not to cut the silicone ring. <clears throat>
Okay, there we go. Just be very careful. Let's see if you just pull it right up. You can see right over here. Focus, you... Focus, you fuck. Thank you. <clears throat> you can see right there it's stretching out pretty good. So you don't want to just rip it right off. <clears throat> so... So you can see that taking the separating this the diaphragm from the mold could be very tricky which i don't think i'm gonna <coughs> i don't think i'm gonna fast forward that i want to see how it is in real time so you can see that it can be a real struggle so you just want to be very gentle with her Okay, so there, you can see I had two little screw-ups, <coughs> two little screw-ups, focus, you fuck, thank you, and you can see right there I had two little screw-ups right then and there, but that's no problem, I'll just take, let's do one quick, one quick on it, let it sit for another week or so and call it a day. So now the next step is pretty easy, you can see it, the back side looks very clean looks very good so we don't even have to touch that side it's just a matter of clean the edge on this side and the way I like to do it it's kind of like you pinch one end and you kind of kind of like you put it to like a little slight angle to it and you kind of like saw it like you're sawing through so it cuts all clean cuts as much off as possible And there, you can see just by doing that one, once around, <coughs> cleans it off really clean, really good. Just doing one time, once around. So, I could probably go around again. I could probably hit it with the wire brush, but it doesn't really matter. You want to try and get as much off as possible, so you don't, <clears throat> so you don't make any. Can't even think of the word. And cleaning this up is no biggie. A lot of this can just come right off with, you can either use your fingers or, or if you're too lazy, just use a wire brush and it should just come right off. You see, it's pretty much, it's pretty much comes right off. Look at that. Right. It's right off. see all that silicon that came out <coughs> okay so I don't want to get these too distracted or too messed up so I'm just gonna put it right back in <coughs> right in like for like and if you don't drop them that also helps a lot helps out a lot get that out and there we go this thing's ready to go uh, to put one of these things together, uh, let me wipe this down first. Because with these guys, you got to make sure that they're really clean. So, you know, I have a microfiber towel cloth. Just go in here, got to wipe off all the cooking oil. Wipe it off. That's good enough. Toss that aside. And to put these together, that little hole, it's got to be clear. And you got to be able to see right through it, just look it up in the light. And if you can, then you're good to go. And all you got to do is simply line that hole, line the little hole with the big hole, line it up, push it together, just like that. And with this, it's very easy as well. Just got to line up the air inlet to the bottom of this once it's all put together and you can screw it back together 
screw it back together. And this thing will be pretty much good as new. Hopefully. Let's still have to take this out for a test. And last click, which is right here. Arrgh, click. There we go. This thing's good to go. So now it's time for the final step. Put this on. Put this on one of those guys right here. Go Merca. Put these on one of these guys. I'll probably test it with the 25 because it looks cool. Let me see. S5T, K5LA, STH10, Webco EE2. And I got four Stutatune fire truck horns. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll take this thing up to the mountains, and we'll see how she chooches. One eternity later. Alrighty, so after my uh, repair, I have all the power chambers all up. I tested the 25, and that sounded right up. So, um, so I feel pretty confident that my repair job will work first time around. So here I have it on the rig. Yeah, as you can see. Got a solenoid for it. I know it's not the best with uh, Leslie's, but it's the only setup I have at the moment. Now, we're gonna take her out for a spin and see how well my repair job did.